sanctuary this morning. It's a wonderful time to be alive. We are alive and well. We are in our right minds. We are with good people and God has been good to us. And we have so many things to complain about, but we have even more things to be happy about. And if it wasn't for God, who knows where we would have been. For God is indeed a good God. He has brought us through a week of crusades and what a wonderful time we had. Amen. We saw that many things were accomplished and God moved in a mighty and a wonderful way. I just want to give God thanks. As we move this song, come now is a time to worship. We have come to give God thanks for he is indeed worthy of it all. Hallelujah. So come. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you Thank you for bringing us all here today safely to worship you in your presence, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord, for those who you're bringing on the way, those who might be on their way, Lord. Pray that you will keep them safe, Lord. Help us to have a good time in your presence, Lord. Pray that you will also let persons' needs be met in this service, Lord. Pray that you will show yourself up in this service, Lord. Pray that you will be with us as your word says, where two or three are gathered in, your, in the midst, you are there, Lord. So as we are gathered here, Lord, we pray that you show up, pray that you manifest your spirit, and pray that there will be healing, there will be breakthrough in this service. Pray that you will bless the musicians, bless every section of the service, Lord. Pray that you will let it go smoothly for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may have your seats. Celebration time. Is there anyone who is in our midst who is visiting us for the first time? Do we have any first time visitors in our midst? Yes, so we have a sister in our back. Could you tell us the name and where you're from? Okay, thank you for visiting on this morning. What up? Any other visitors? Okay, no other visitors. What about, well, this, it's birthdays. Anybody celebrating a birthday from today on to Saturday? Could you stand and tell us when is that birthday? Today on to Saturday, anybody celebrations? Okay, nobody celebrations. What about an anniversary? Does anyone celebrate about an anniversary this week? Or sister in the back? Today, how many years are you celebrating? Six years. Happy anniversary to you. And wish you many, many, many more to come. If you are viewing us and you have a birthday celebration or an anniversary celebration, we just want to wish you happy birthday and a happy anniversary when that day comes. Let's all stand as we continue in our worship. As we say, God is a God of love and he loves us so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for us. Even though we were not worthy of it, we, we didn't deserve it, he still saw it fit. And we need his love to protect us as we go about our day. As we go about our journeys, as we go about life, we just have to be close to him.
understanding of a matchless God. A God that has made gone many lanes to find us. He left the 99 and come look for me. When I didn't know my worth, he still came for me.
Take up your morning's tithes and offering. Good morning, church. So I would like to just encourage us in in giving and in giving in our offering. In Proverbs 11 and verse 24, it speaks about a man who scatters receive more. And the one who withholds what is rightly due unto him leads unto poverty. And I find that rather interesting because as we learn in primary school mathematics, that if John has ten apples and he gives six, then he will leave with four apples. However, what this proverb is relating to us is, is, is telling us the principle that when we give, it would lead to an increase. And when we hold back what is rightfully ours, what we work for, what is due unto us, it leads unto poverty. And that does not make any sense, but it's a spiritual reality. And it's a spiritual principle that when we, when we practice it, something is being unlocked spiritually. When we look at the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, coming down to verse 33, when it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto us. Leading up to that particular verse, Jesus was speaking about three particular spiritual disciplines, giving, fasting, and praying. And out of these three, he spoke about hypocrites. That you can be a hypocrite in giving, hypocrite in fasting, hypocrite in, in praying. And I find that very interesting as we can do these things wrongly, and also rightly. And when we do it rightly, then God will, re will, will, re will reward us what his promise is. His word says that we perish by a lack of knowledge. And when I found this particular scripture, Proverbs 11 and 24, and I applied it in my life, honestly, I saw the Lord would have poured into my life and also my family's life. When I saw it and I applied it, I then gave to the Lord diligently and also consistently and also give to other persons whether the needy or those who are around give unto them then I saw the Lord give back and it's not only financially but he also gave back in resources my wife received favor my child received favor not because of whatsoever or any kind of thing but because of being faithful and obedient the word says that if we are willing and obedient we shall eat and we will also see the God of the land so that's my encouragement unto us that when we apply these spiritual disciplines the Lord will uphold his, his hand, he will do what he said that he will do so I'll just pray at this moment so Father God I thank you for your goodness Lord I thank you Lord that you are sovereign, you are holy and God you are righteous and you will not lie you're not a son of man 
that you will lie nor repent, oh Father God. So we ask God that you will strengthen us, Father God. Give us the wisdom, Lord God, to work. Give us the wisdom to invest, oh God. And also give us the heart to give, oh Father God. Because when we give, we are, we are being a representative of you, oh Father God. Lord, we come against the enemy. Father God, I want to cause us to withhold, oh Father God, and I pray that we would give unto you and give cheerfully, oh Father God, knowing, oh Lord, that you will not withhold what is due unto us, Father. So I bless the offering. I pray that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom, oh Lord God, and bless your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Brother Adrian. You may go forth and give your offering. Tell me, what can I do? Because I can't live without you. I can't live without you. So tell me, what can I do? Because I can't live.
success of the crusade lord we thank you for the preacher we thank you for evangelist worms we just want to thank you for the strength that you gave him through the six days we recognize that it's not easy oh god to be um, out there shouting lord we thank you for the strength you gave him and we pray that every virtue oh god that left him we ask for replenishment in the mighty name of jesus we pray oh god thanking you for every soul that was won on that days, on those days, we pray that you will keep them. We pray that the true reward of salvation, that is joy, the satisfaction, the peace that, oh God, we all enjoy. We pray that you'll be evident in them in the mighty name of Jesus. We also pray for the seeds that were being sown in their lives. We pray that the devil will not snatch those seeds from their hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that, oh God, even as the seed, that they fell on fertile ground and we come against, oh God, the worries of life that we may want to, oh God, choke out that seed out of their hearts. We come against such in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray also, oh King of glory, asking that, oh God, that your spirit will be with them. We build a hedge of fire around every soul, everyone that um, make that decision of serving you. We build a hedge of fire around them, protecting them, that they will grow in their faith. We pray that their faith will be established in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we continue just to pray and thank you, even for the many more souls, oh God, those who hurt. And oh God, just like um, um, Paul made us understand that he planted, Apollos, Ap Apollos planted, Paul watered. And oh God, you give the increase. 
we ask that, oh God, those who are exposed to the world at that, and in that moment, those who, oh God, have not come to make that decision, that in the days forward, we pray, oh King of glory, that you will continue to convict their hearts, cause circumstances to work together, oh God, to the point where they will decide, oh God, firmly to serve you. I also continue to pray, oh King of glory, oh Father, for every other person, oh God, who has not come to know you through the crusade, oh God, through whatever means, we are also continue to pray that more for more and more ideas yes like you gave us for this crusade we pray for more and more wisdom oh god on how oh god to win souls even in these last days we ask that all oh, those who oh god are far and wide oh god i know in this community we pray for oh god king of glory they, they, they just the uh, the spirit of God and the angels of God to go forth, O King of glory. O God, haunting those ones too and bringing them all. My Father, even as we come to, to a close of this, this age, we pray that, O King of glory, that you, O more and more evident, will set up our hearts, my God, to reach out to men. We thank you, fresh food Father. Have your way and continue to bless us, O God, even as we trust you more and more for souls in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. You may have a seat as we be favored by a special, by our sister Janelle Jackson, a span solo.
Amen, amen. Such wonderful talent, the pan. That's a wonderful instrument, ain't it? Amen, and she is indeed blessed. Hallelujah. Let's all stand as we have the scripture reading this time. It will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 2. 1 John chapter 3, verses 16, and also 1 John chapter 3, verses 35. It will be read by our sister Natasha York. The scripture reading again, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, and also 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 and 35. Morning, church. Okay, the first reading. First Corinthians 1 to 2. Paul called to an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sotune, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinthians, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that is. All that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both there and theirs and ours. Second reading. Okay, so first John three, sixteen to nineteen. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso has this world good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My ch little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deeds and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. Thirteen thirty-five. John. Thirteen thirty-five. But this shall all men know, that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Here ends the reading. Thank you. Let's all welcome our speaker for this morning. At this time, we have a children's church, so could the children go to your churches upstairs? And we now have our speaker for this morning, our first lady, Sister Maureen Williams. Welcome her as she comes this morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Let's just give him a round of applause. As we think about his love, we sang so much about his love this morning, and it's so good to be loved. Isn't it? Yes. Um, I just want to, first of all, acknowledge those of you who made decisions in the crusade that we just had. Do we have anyone... Here with us today, I suspect some of the children who gave their hearts to the Lord have gone upstairs. Do we have anyone um, in the sanctuary at this time? You made a decision during the crusade. Great, great. Let's just give him a hand. Thank you for coming. 
and we'll continue to pray for you and look forward to fellowshipping with you. God bless you. And those who have not, are probably not here, from time to time you would get the names and know those persons so that we can do our very best to encourage them in this path that they have taken. God is indeed a good God and worthy to be praised. So let's bow our heads at this time. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor. Lord, we thank you for your love, this everlasting love, Lord, that causes you to chase us, to find us, God, Though we don't deserve it, you have given us your love. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you would climb mountains, light up shadows, kick down walls for us. God, what a love. We thank you for your love this morning. And we pray, Lord, that we as your people would manifest this great love to others. I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we have just gone through um, the readings. And as you, from time to time, I'd be referring to a number of passages throughout my discourse or our discourse this morning. So you just keep your Bibles at hand also. Now February is long seen as the month of love. Right? And these days I am so um, amused at who really, the ones who really are so excited about Valentine's Day. Who is it? The children? And the young people, I don't know if they have valentines, but they are so excited and they expect mommy and daddy to give them a valentine gift. And some of them do remember to give us one. But February is seen as the month of love. And because it is seen as this, it should mean that this is the month when we would examine our relationships and endeavor to improve them. But sadly, this is sometimes not the case. The activities we engage in is sometimes what I would call as putting a plaster, a nice plaster, to cover a terrible looking wound. We engage in buying flowers, chocolate, going out to dinners, etc. And those are very nice things to do. All wonderful because they spice up our relationships. But these alone cannot fix relationships. This year, we at Glad Tidings are in the process of rebuilding. Even as we focus on our year's theme, rediscovering our founder's vision. One of the very important areas in rebuilding any organization any company, and indeed any church, must be the area of interpersonal relationships. Because it is people who make up churches. People make up organizations. People who make up companies. So in the rebuilding process, whatever it is you are building or rebuilding, a very important area is people and the interpersonal relationships with people. And so today, we want to look at rebuilding relationships. Now we begin with, the, with one of the passages that was read, John chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. Sorry, John 3, 16. No, not 16. First John 3 and verse 16. This is how we know what love is. 
Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And this speaks of the kind of relationships that should exist among believers. I want to believe that as we consider, we think of rebuilding relationships. We do not need a magnifying glass to see that relationships are not what they should be in the church today. Don't need a magnifying glass. In fact, we don't need a magnifying glass to see that relationships in the homes between husbands and wives, between parents and children, between neighbor and neighbor, etc., have broken down somewhat and need rebuilding. So it is my hope that as we talk today about rebuilding relationships, we will endeavor to look at all our relationships with an eye to improving them. And today we want to look at the three W's. You know, if you need any information these days, you have to go on the World Wide Web, www.something. If you want to find out about remedies, these days we love to look them up ourselves. You go to www. Maybe you'll go to health.company or whatever. So we want to look at the three W's today. And maybe we can say www.wordofgodsays slash relationships dot Bible. And we go with our first W. Why should we rebuild relationships? Jesus said that it is our mark of identification that we are his. Isn't that important? Why should we build relationships? Jesus said that that is how people will know that we are Christians. Disciples are true followers. And John 13, 35 says... By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have love one to another. And when we look at the word know in the original Greek, it means come to know. Get a knowledge of, perceive, and understand. So it's saying this is how people will come to know. This is how people will understand. This is how people will perceive that, hey, there goes a disciple of Jesus. And we know, as I said earlier, that a disciple is one who follows a particular teaching. Or one who has joined a party. It is a mark of ID, like a uniform, a party color, which we'll be seeing next month. A lot of, as one party celebrates their anniversary. We use all kinds of things to show ID. And these days, as Christians, we're using so many things to show that we are who we say we are. Some people wear a cross. Some people wear a prayer shawl. Some people have to, they walk around with a, a show bread, a horn that they can blow. All sorts of things to show people that, hey, I'm a Christian. But all of that is secondary to what Jesus said. Jesus said, the idea is that you have love one for another. And notice it says, that you love your brother. It didn't say that you love your brother. It says 
that you have love one for another. And this speaks of reciprocity. It means a mutual exchange. It implies that with the same measure you do for me, I will do for you. Reciprocity and love are key ingredients in rebuilding relationships. This very important area is so important to the one who purchased our redemption. Having the right relationship with our brothers and sisters is of paramount importance to our master, to our founder, that he used it as the identifying mark. So we said it is his ID, but secondly, it is our duty. And we go to 1 John 3 and 16. That says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. What a wonderful thing Jesus has done for us. Amen. Hallelujah. This is how we know what love is. That someone would lay down their life. I know that. My friend over there in the pink, you love your wife very dearly, but I'm not sure you're going to lay down your life for hers. If there's a choice between living, I don't know, maybe, but scarcely we would give our lives for a friend. Be killed. But this is what Jesus did for us. What a love. What an unconditional love. And imagine, you know, he first loved us. He loved us when we were out in sin. He loved us when we had nothing to do with him. His love caused him to sacrifice his life for us. Hallelujah. And so we, the verse says, this is how we know what love is. And in the same way, we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. So it's not a choice. This is a serious thing. And when we look at the meaning of the word ought, it means to be indebted. That which is due to be under obligation. This means that we owe someone something. And in this case, we owe Jesus something. We owe him but look at the payment that he requires of us. His payment is that we must pay it forward. That's a very popular um, term you're seeing these days. Pay it forward. Someone does something for you. You don't necessarily do it back to that person. But you do it to someone who is in need. And Jesus is saying, pay it forward. Pay it to your brothers. The same love I have given you, you owe it to your brothers. Pay it forward. And Romans chapter 13 and verse 8 explains it further. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt, of debt to love one another. For whosoever loves others has fulfilled the law. And what is this thing that we ought to lay down? We ought to lay down our lives. And when we search in this verse in the original, the words to lay down come together as one phrase. And it means to make or set for one's self or one's use. And it's the idea of setting a table. You set out your table for somebody to come and dine. It also means to commit and to serve. So the idea is that to lay down our lives for our friends means to commit, to put ourselves or make ourselves available to serve one another. That's, that's a tall order. We must commit, we must make ourselves available to serve one another, to serve my brother, to serve my sister. 
And you see the same thing coming up again? This whole idea of reciprocity. It's not a one-way thing. It's more than me doing, 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 me reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. It's a two-way process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just set this. Great. So if I am laying down my life for you, and you are laying down your life for me, we can only imagine the kind of environment that would exist. Think about a family. Let's look at a family. And in that family, husband is laying down his, his life, committing to serve. Wife is committing to be available for husband. Parents are committed to being available for children. Children are committing to being available for parents. What a, a little heaven on earth that family would be. And that's what our founder expects of us. Sharing, giving, and receiving. So that's why we have to do it, because it is our founder's choice and that is what he uses as our identity and also it is our duty. So let's look at some ways then of rebuilding relationships. How do we do this? And firstly, it is very important if we are going to love anybody, we must first love ourselves. You know there are people who don't love themselves we must love ourselves. We must recognize who we are in Christ. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are a royal priesthood. We are loved and cared for by our good shepherd. And as we read through scripture, this is the picture we get of how God thinks about us. Genesis chapter 1 Verses 26 to 28 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God said he's going to make man in his image. And then he gave him dominion, and then God did it and then he proclaimed it that's who you are don't you feel important i certainly do god conceived it then he did it made us in his image you are made in the image of the, your creator why are you thinking less of yourself than you ought to think and then he gave him dominion, rule over the earth. Every animal is subject to us. And then throughout scripture, it, it is emphasized. In Psalm 139 verse 14, David exclaims, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. You are a marvelous work. Say, I am a marvelous work. Say it like you mean it. I am a marvelous work. Hallelujah. Again, David echoes in Psalm 23 and verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You are precious in God's sight. He cares for you like a loving shepherd. You are special. First Peter 2 and 9 says, But you are the ones chosen by God 
chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him. Let's just give him a praise at this time. Thank you, God, for who you have made me, for who you have made us. Lift up your head. Hallelujah. You are special in God's sight. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter your situation that exists around you. Say to yourself every day, I am important. I am special. Nobody ain't better than me. Hallelujah. As the prime minister always says, I am not better than anybody, but nobody is better than me. And believe that. You must have a healthy view of yourself and love yourself in order to build positive relationships. Otherwise, you will be easily offended and think you are being target, targeted or put down when that is far from the truth. So when we think that we are not much, someone may just walk past and didn't see you. But because we are thinking, I'm not much, we say, oh, She's better than me. She thinks she's better than me. She walked past straight. Person ain't even see you yet. In their mind, they're thinking, I didn't take out the meat this morning to cook, you know. I got to reach home on time. I got to, I got to. So you must have that concept to say, watch, I wonder what you're thinking about. We must do that to have healthy relationships. Secondly, in creating relationships, we must respect each other as our sibling in Christ, regardless of where they have come from or who they are. Now think of your experience as a sibling. You have a brother or a sister. Do you always agree with them? Don't you have little disagreements? But if your brother or your sister is in trouble... You're going to say, well, yesterday we fight, you know. So today I have no time with you. Do you do that? No, we look out for each other as siblings. I remember, well, there are 11 of us my parents had. Nine of us grew up together because two died very early. But I was always the one afraid of everything. I couldn't fight. I couldn't defend myself. I was always Freddy Cat, as they would say. And the, my brothers and sisters looked out for me. You couldn't trouble Maureen. They would take care of me, my younger siblings even. And they would tease me so much because I was always afraid of grasshoppers. And if I did anything wrong, then they would just pick a big leaf and say, they have a grasshopper. And I am scared and I'm running under the bed. But they would look out for me. We walked together to school. We share each other's lunch. This is my sissy, as I learned in the Vincentian Tuang. This is my sissy. This is my sister. I have to look out for, for her. And in the same way, we have to see our brothers and sisters in Christ as our siblings in Christ. People are not the same, but we have to live with each other. And we, to do this, we must be thinking the best of others always. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. And vain glory means empty pride, self deceit. And esteem means to put down, to, sorry, to put before like a prince with regal power. So this verse is saying, put away your pride. Don't, don't use empty pride. But think of your brother like a prince or a princess and treat them like that. And remember, the thread of recipro reciprocity is running through everything. So it's not me doing you that and you're not responding in the same way. The NIV puts it this way. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility. Value others above yourselves. Wow. 
If that happens in the home, what a heaven on earth. If that happens among believers, what a heaven on earth as well. And thirdly, to maintain relationships, we must be constantly practicing forgiving. We know the famous passage in Matthew 18 where Peter asked Jesus about forgiveness in verses 21 to 22. And then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 70 times 7. And in verses 22 and 33, Jesus goes on to use a parable to explain this about the unmerciful servant who owed the master a sum of money and was about to, to be thrown in jail. And he went and begged for mercy. Master, forgive me, please. And the master forgave him. And then somebody owed him less. A little man owed him less and couldn't pay him. And the man begged for mercy and he threw him in jail. And Jesus says in verses 32 to 33, Then the master called the servant, servant in and said, You wicked servant. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant? just as I had on you. And of course, he threw him in jail. We must learn to forgive. Our Heavenly Father has forgiven us so much. And he constantly has to forgive us. It's not that we were good and we're good and forever good. Every day, sometimes we can think of things that we have done that Jesus would say, oh my, there she goes again. But he opens up his heart. He opens up his love that we sang about. And he forgives us. And we have to forgive as well. First Peter 4, 8 says, Above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. Love covers over a multitude of sins. And in Mark 25, we read, let me just get that verse for you. Mark 11, 25, sorry. And when you stand praying, forgive if he have ought against any. That your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. L let me read it again, you know. And when you stand praying, forgive. So if you are praying, and you remember, boy, such and such and such. It is implying, stop, stop prayer right there. Stop. Make a conscious decision to forgive and then continue praying. If you have ought against it. No, it didn't say, I mean, the Bible requires so much of it. didn't say if your brother have ought against you, you know. It says if you, if you have ought against your brother, forgive. So it is me. I am the offended one. You offended me. But I must still forgive you. Or, and, or in the other case, I have offended you. I must ask for forgiveness. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. Why? That we know is a preposition. That will tell you what will be the result of that. So that your father, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So maybe many of us walking around unforgiven. 
by God because he, he, he cannot lie. This is his word. Because we have not forgiven. I'll leave that right there. So we must be forgiven. We must constantly be forgiven because things are always happen. We will be offended. We will offend others. In the family, we will offend husbands. Husbands will offend wives. But we have to live in that spirit of forgiveness. Forgiving sometimes when the person doesn't even know that they have offended you. Practice forgiving. Because I want to be forgiven when I stand to pray, when I kneel to pray, when I lie on my bed in the morning and I say, God, help me. Such and such is the case. I need some light bill money. Oh, but you know, I ain't forgive Mary Jane. Oh, God, you know, I offended. So, Lord, forgive me. You know, Mary Jane offended me. You know, she cost me blue. You know, forgive her, Lord. And I forgive her. And then you continue, yes, God, so the light bill, the, the cost is 300. That's what we are ought to do. Because there's something about praying. It brings things to your mind. You agree with me? Yes. I read again, First Peter says, love covers a multitude of sins. Not that the sin not there, but it covers and then my last W is some warnings. There are some persons who are bent on destroying relationships by being busybodies. They seek to cause division. And these days, the division is not even coming obviously because it's not that they're bringing Sometimes bad news against someone. But these days, they are using the scriptures. The things of God to cause division. Hear what Romans 16 verses 17 to and 18 says. And I read from the message. One final word of counsel, my friend, friends. Keep a sharp eye out for those who who take bits and pieces of the teaching that you have learned and use them to make trouble. And the NIV says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. Now, let me tell you something. There's something I have practiced from a youth. I keep away from troublesome people. I keep away. I say hello, and maybe you may think that I'm your friend, your bosom buddy, but I love you with the love of the Lord. And if I see you in a ditch, I will take you out. But we will not be having dealings every day. If all you're bringing to my mind is bitterness, things that are terrible, I don't have time to be corrupted. We don't have enough time as it is. I ain't had time to listen to no, nothing to corrupt me and to make me watch people with lizard eye. Because my Bible tells me, keep far from them. And in all the loving and all the reciprocity, God is careful to give us the whole picture. To give us all the different scenarios. Because there are some people that you will have to avoid. There are some people that you will have to avoid. We must be aware that there are those who like to spit in your mouth. Keep far from those persons. Simple thing. Somebody may walk past. She thinks she look good, eh? And I remember, I love what the preacher said um, one night. Simply ask the question, where does Tom Jones live? 
and you want to say something. So you say, who Tom Jones you mean? You mean the Tom Jones who beat his wife? You mean the Tom Jones who did, and the Tom Jones who did? I didn't ask you that. Proverbs 17 and verse 9 says, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. But he that repeateth a matter separateth friends. To uncover someone's sin by repeating it to others will ruin relationships and divide friendship. There is a time and a place for exposure of sin. But often, the sins of others could be tactfully and lovingly covered. But we do it. We can't wait when something bad happens to someone to repeat it and repeat it and cause division. It is a warning from the scriptures. It is a warning. Strong words are used. I urge you. I beg you. Watch out for those who cause division. And those who use what you have been taught. The Bible says what you have learned. They take out tits, bits and pieces. And cause division. So a few things to note then. One, relationship must be reciprocal. It can be one way. It is a two-way process. Secondly, do your part to make yourself likable now. Do your part to make yourself likable. Nobody wants to be around someone who is not likable. Practicing the fruit of the Spirit in its entirety can help us to be likable people. Hear what Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. And when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, it means that which originates or comes from something. The effect or the result. Just like how mangoes come from the mango tree. You don't see your mango tree bearing plum rose. If we have the Holy Spirit, then the behaviors that should naturally originate, that should naturally come from us, are these things. The effect of being a Christian, the effect of being with Christ, the effect of being a prophetess, of be, you're able to speak in tongues, you're able to interpret, you're able to prophesy, you're able to lay hands on the sick, whatever, will be these things. Those are persons who are, should be, oh, so nice to be around. Growing up, I always thought, it, you know, I always said to myself, I don't want to be a few things. I didn't want to be a pastor's wife. And I didn't want to be a church mother. You know who's a church mother? Somebody who is there long. And they feel that they know it all. They're sometimes the worst people to live with, you know. I call it, you know, there's a thing that we have. UTI, urinary tract infection. If you have not drunk enough water, I'm not a doctor, so let me not say what causes it. But from time to time, we have it. And it would make you feel as if you want to cut your bladder out, cut your ureta out, and throw it away because it is so painful. But you know, you can't do that because you need them. And I, it comes to mind, there are persons who become UTIs. They become so irritating that you wish you could chop them out. Because they, they exhibit behaviors 
that, are, that make people feel less than themselves. When you are around them, they make you feel unholy because you're not as holy as them. They make you feel unspiritual because you didn't have a word from the Lord for them today. They pretend as if they know it all. Irritating. I don't like to be around those people. They have the right words to say. And you dare not, they will ask you how you're feeling today. You better say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> don't say that I'm not feeling well. But we're going back to the fruit of the Spirit. Now, very, sometimes I believe that we forget that right in there, part of the fruit are words like forbearance or long-suffering, words like kindness, words like gentleness, words like goodness. And when, let's just look at the meaning of these words. Forbearance in some translations and in some long-suffering. It means perseverance. It means patience, but I discovered that it also means slowness in avenging wrongs. Slowness in avenging wrong. So somebody is doing you wrong, but you are slow in avenging that. You're taking it to God. You're taking it to him in prayer. And you're recognizing that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. That is long suffering. It's not just, oh, a suffering so long, daylight bail. No, it is bearing with others. Even in the home, we have to have long suffering. It's there we have to have long suffering sometimes. With spouses, let's not pretend. You're going to run and say, God help me today. <laughs> and then you come out smiling. And with your children, we must be long suffering. Then it speaks of kindness slash gentleness. When you read the different translations, those two words are interchanged. And it means a token of friendliness and goodwill. Tenderness. Do we think of those words as Christian? No. Me a plain penny. Me go just say it. If you don't like it, bite it. What about tenderness? Gentleness. Friendliness. And goodness means moral goodness. It means integrity. And it's not passive. It's active. You're making a deliberate preference of right instead of wrong. A firm and persist persistent resistance to all moral evil. And a choice to following moral good. This is what should come from us. We are deliberately standing for right and not wrong. So we're not coming on the bandwagon and kill this person. We're not joining to tear down this person. All these behaviors help us to be likable people. Everything that we need, the Bible says, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through a knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Everything we need, God has provided for us. Proverbs 21 and 21 says, Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. That's the benefit of being lovable, reaching out to your brother. When you pursue righteousness and you pursue love, you get back prosperity and honor. John 13, 34 to 35 says, let me give you a new command. Love one another in the same way I loved you. You love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love 
you have for each other. Now, as I was at the, finished preparing, you know, I said, Lord, what do I say at the end? And it was very plain to me that we need to make this practical. So right now, I'm asking us to bow our heads and to think of someone that you have broken relationship with, whether fairly or unfairly. They might have done you something, or you might have done them something. Think about that person even right now and ask God to forgive you and consciously forgive them in your mind. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come before you at this time. Your word says in another passage, if we take our gifts to the altar and we remember that our brother has ought against us, leave the gift there and make amends. God, we make amends this morning at this time. We make amends this morning. God, we ask you to forgive us and to release, O oh God, us from unforgiveness. Lord, it is bitter. When we think about what the person has done to us, it, it cuts. But God, bitterness destroys and it will eventually destroy us if we do not let go. So God, we let go from bitterness and we ask you to do what only you can do in us because we can't do it of ourselves. We come back to you asking for your help to help us to let go and to make amends. Lord, we know where we have gone wrong. We know in our heart of heart that we should not have said what we said. We should not have done what we did. God, forgive us and help us to make amends. In Jesus' name. That's the first part. The second thing is, if that person is in church today, say something before you go home. I won't ask you to get up and say something now. But say something to that person before you leave. It does. And even as we do this song, let's stand together. Sometimes it's hard for me to understand why we pull away from each other so easily even though we're all walking the same road yet we build dividing walls between our brothers and ourselves but i If you believe in Jesus, you belong with me. The bond we share is all I care to see. And we will change the world forever. If we join with me, join and say.
for us by Sister Esther Matthews, we want to just express appreciation for your cooperation during the last crus the crusade we've just had. We want to thank Brother Samuel Constance, always so dependable, always so on time. We appreciate your effort. We pray God's blessing on you and those who would, have, who would assist him. Sometimes I, I say, boy, anyway, we pray for more willing hands to lift up your hands. We want to congratulate the ushers. We want to say thank you to the ushers. You really made us proud. Your efficiency and the way you went about doing what you had to do. We want to thank the altar workers. As soon as was necessary, you were there. We want to thank the worship leaders. We want to thank our musicians who didn't just play for our night, but filled in for the other churches who needed support. We want to thank all those of you who supported by coming out. Without you, it would not have been possible. We thank you. We thank Sister Florence for decorating the stage 
Again, glad tidings, men, and they were joined by a few others for the erection of the stage. We just want to give God thanks for you and for all that you would have done to make this crusade a success. And these are the words coming from your pastor, Bishop Sonny E. Williams. So I'll call Sister Esther at this time for the announcements. Good morning, church. Please listen to the announcements. Sunday, February 25th, 2024. The Belair Outdoor Sunday School will meet this afternoon from 3 to 4 p.m. at the Plato's Residence in Belair. Annual Business Meeting. The church will hold its annual business meeting this afternoon at 5 p.m. All members are asked to be out to this meeting. Monday, February 26, 2024, Boys Club. Boys Club will be held at the Daphne Community Center at 4.30 p.m. Missionettes. The Missionettes Girls Group will also meet tomorrow at the Gourmet Methodist School Grounds at 4.30 p.m. Young girls aged 5 to 12 years are invited to attend. Women Ministries. Women's Ministries and Wives will be open tomorrow at church at 5.30. They will have a meet and greet session. All women and young ladies are asked to bring along a friend. Wednesday, February 28, 2024. Power Week, Prayer and Fasting. The church will join Pawi District SVG this Wednesday for prayer and fasting from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. Under the team, spiritual leadership. Glad Tidings will conduct the two-hour session from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. All are asked to take note. The link, the link will be sent to the church's WhatsApp group. Thursday, March 14, 2024, Family Day. Please note that the church will be having a social to launch a department on National Heroes Day, Thursday, March 14th at 2024. This will be held at the Daphne Community Center grounds and will commence at 10 a.m. Bring your entire family, invite your friends to join us for a time of fun, food, and fellowship. Just wash your foot and come. Sunday, March 24, 2024, District Convocation. District Convocation will be held on Sunday, March 24th under the team, Expanded Through Evangelism, Maturing to Discipleship. This will be held at the Victoria Park, commencing at 9 a.m. The speaker will be Reverend Ricardo Joseph, Powys District, Powys Executive Director for World Missions. An exhibition will be held in the afternoon at 2 p.m. These are all the announcements. Thank you, Esther. Let's just stand for the benediction. Just to highlight that we know we had a week of crusades and we are tired, but this evening is our annual business meeting. The dates are set on the district so that the, the presiding bishop of the district can be at as many of them. So it's not a case that we could have postponed. This is our evening. So please be out at five this evening for our annual business meeting. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. God bless